Another strange thing that happens when you keep adding frets uh, is you get you end up with a sound that's that's you know there's so many frets it's almost fretless. I remember Ivor Dari, one of the early microtonalists, used to have nightmares about waking up and you know he put so many frets on it just became a metal neck again. He had to start all over. So. <laughs> Do you find yourself bending strings less? No, actually you bend more. In, uh, in, in just, you can never have everything. It's a trade-off between how many frets you can put on the guitar and what's playable. So uh, if you just want to play in one key and drone with those 12 notes, which some a lot of destination guys do, it makes your life easier. But if you're used to playing even a blues where you have three chords and you want to get three harmonic seven chords, say you want E, a and D, like in the key of A, uh, blues. You run into problems like your D note for the, for the four chord is going to be a different D note than the seventh harmonic of the E chord. So you're going to actually need two different D notes, one for the four chord and one for the five chord that's the seventh of that chord. So you need so many notes that you end up kind of bending in order to get stuff uh, where, you, where you don't have it. I tried to design this fingerboard so you have position playing and scales and uh, chords. And also so that some of the notes, as many as possible, fall in, under the natural node of the string. Like under the third harmonic, uh, the major third. You want, a, you want a fret there and the seventh harmonic and all that stuff. So, And the other thing is that the more you get used to these small uh, and finer divisions of pitch, the better your ear gets at discerning them. So that's why it really goes hand in hand with fretless. And a lot of fretless guys do play uh, microtonal instruments, I think, for that reason. They help each other. They kind of go hand in hand. Do you play uh, a metal fretboard so you can kind of get around those problems? Uh, the first fretless I had about 20 years ago was a stainless steel fingerboard and uh, it had pretty good sustain and tone but uh, I came across a guy uh, years ago that had been working on this process of applying a, uh, a hard surface to the fingerboard of the wood uh, that made it sustain and, and have a better tone even than the metal fingerboard. So now I stick with those. It seems to be a more slippery feeling, like the metal after, you know, if you start sweating, you get gunked up and hard to play. But the treated fingerboards, I think, have a, for me, a better sustain and tone. So I don't use my metal one as much anymore. Well, actually, my question was, uh, uh, since you said more and more frets, that up, that's why I went metal. Um, but uh, do you play fretless so you have more uh, flexibility for chord choices, note choices? Yeah, some of the fretless tunes that I write are, are in what's called, I call a fretless intonation, meaning uh, you might take a just intonation chord and move it up incrementally, and you might, in that way, be able to move just to divide a, uh, a semitone into four, into four steps between a B and C. So in other words, you play a pure uh, just scale on B and, and going up a pure just scale on B half sharp, a pure just scale on C half flat, and a pure just scale on C. And that's something that if you want to do that in, in a fretted just context would require millions of frets and you probably couldn't do it. So I do use fretless for that reason to get uh, other notes that are harder to get. Although I tune my fretless in just intonation. Uh, when you tune a guitar in just, if you were to tune all your intervals in just, you're, you would end up with your two E strings being different. 
And for a guitar player, that's kind of counterintuitive. So you have to put what's called a comma, which is a slight, uh, in this case, about 21 cents, a slight pitch deviation in between two of the strings. Uh, I chose to put my comma between the D and the G string. Uh, in that way, I have on the bottom perfect fourths from E to A to D. In the top, I have a pure adjustment nation triad of E minor. So that gives you, you know, help when you're playing, say, blues in A. You get the, the one, four, and five chords on the low open strings. And you get your usual chord on top. It does present this interval in between the D and G, which is not unjust. And that's why a lot of the frets on this guitar are split, so you can play those D and G strings together and get the, get the pure fourth chord. But unless you want to tune guitar to an open tuning, like an open G chord or an open chord or something like that, uh, you're going to have to put a comma in there somewhere if you want to approximate the regular guitar tuning that you've been kind of playing all your life. And one other thing I should mention is that there's a, a step between the fretless and this just guitar is the uh, ultra 12 tone ultra plus guitar, which keeps all the 12 regular frets where they are and adds just intonation frets, one in between each 12 tone fret. And that is also a 13 limit system. It has 7th, 11th, and 13th harmonics. Uh, on that guitar, I usually keep mine tuned to D's and A's. Uh, that way it gets rid of the major third tuning and the open guitar tuning, and you're just left with uh, a nice root and fifth to play uh, you know, these other 7th, 11th, and 13th harmonics. So, so what's your 1-1 one, one on this guitar? On this, the 1-1 one, one is A. Did you experiment with making E the 1-1 one, one also? And I thought about different 1-1s one, in the beginning, but it went back to the open strings and how I wanted to tune those. Mm -hmm. And uh, if E was the 1-1, one, one, it would be less obvious where the open, how the open string should be tuned for me anyway. You could just, you know, then like your G would be like the 6-5 or something like that. Right. It could be the harmonic 7th, maybe. And yeah, I have done, I've written songs where the guitar was tuned to the harmonic 7th chord, but actually in this tuning, the G string is a 6-5 from the, from the E. Okay. Uh, for you guys who don't know, there's, you can call all these pitches that are on this guitar, or any just nation system, you can refer to them by ratios, one note over another. In 12 tone, all the notes are a 12 root of 2 related relation to something else. So it's a very mathematically highly complex and non-repeating vibrational system you're hearing in 12 tone equal. Uh, when he says 6 over 5, that's a relation of one part of the string to another, uh, six parts to five. Uh, when you do that in just the nation, you, you get these things called difference tones. And they're really there everywhere, but we try to get rid of them in normal tuning because they're so horrendously out of tune in 12 tone. In just the nation, the difference tones, in this case, the first difference tone would be six minus five is one. Uh, so the sixth harmonic, uh, that would mean you're in, in the key of C if you're using the 6-5 and, and it's E and G. So 6-5 actually produces a, a lower difference tone of C, even though you're not playing it. Well, if I can do it on this amp, I'll try to play two notes up high and see if you can hear the low difference tone that's lower than the range of the guitar. The other phenomenon about difference tones is that when you move one note slightly, the difference tone moves a lot in the other direction. So I'll, I'll keep one note constant, move another note up a small amount, and uh, hopefully you can hear the difference tone moving down in a larger amount. I'll play just the uh, just the untreated ones first and I'll try to add